Welcome to Open Minded Healing, where the topic is alternative health. We will be having conversations with the practitioners that offer a variety of alternative healing modalities, as well as everyday people who have recovered their health outside of the MD's office. Join us with an open mind for conversations that may provide solutions to healing your own body on a mental, physical, and spiritual level. I'm Marla Miller. Let's begin. Welcome everyone. Today, I've invited back a previous guest, Eileen Durfee. Eileen is a former nuclear power plant engineer who became sick due to chemical exposure. Her journey to overcome her own health issues led her to become an inventor and businesswoman. Eileen founded her own health company called Creatrix Solutions to create and distribute natural healing products worldwide. Her experience continues to motivate her to create the best possible health solutions to protect family, friends, and consumers from our toxic world. In addition, Eileen has been featured on major media outlets, including ABC, NBC, and CBS. Welcome, Eileen. Well, thank you for having me back. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you back. You're always a wealth of information, and so I appreciate what you have to share. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that some might find funny or unusual, or they may be curious about it, but we're going to really get into this topic today. And the topic is coffee enemas. So I would say a lot of people know what an enema is and may have experienced it. Maybe if they had a colonoscopy, you know, sort of that clearing out of your colon through different means, but the coffee enema is a little bit different. So Do you want to give a general description and then maybe a little scientific background? Sure. Coffee enemas are basically mainly water with some strong brewed coffee added to it. So the solution kind of looks like a very light brown color or tan, you know, because it doesn't have very much coffee. Let's say if you had like a quart of water, you might have a tablespoon of strong coffee in there. So it is a coffee enema because, you know, you're putting fluid up your rectum. And so then the body retains that fluid for a while before expelling it. And coffee enemas, believe it or not, are written about in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So they've literally been around for thousands of years. Well, I can admit I have done this technique many times <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was healing, going through my healing process with autoimmune and my foot was really swollen. That was one of uh, the big symptoms was I was on crutches because my foot was so swollen. I couldn't touch it to the ground. But when I started to do the coffee enemas, I mean, I was doing them like every other day for a little while because I had such benefit from it. Uh, Immediately after I would do the coffee enema, the inflammation in my foot totally went down. It would last, I don't remember, the rest of the day. It was like the rest of the day or 24 hours, something like that. But it was amazing to see that immediate response. And on top of that, I remember I always felt so much more clear-headed. I always felt lighter and like I could get more done that day, had more focus. Also in doing them, I mean, people are probably conjuring all kinds of images in their head uh, (laughs) regarding how this is done. But I will say before we get into it later is to me, it was almost like a meditative practice. To me, it was just a relaxing time. You have nothing else scheduled. You have kind of that peace and quiet for like a half an hour, however long you end up doing it. So that was my experience. I mean, you've explained what the coffee itself does, right? With the glutathione, that's strictly due to the coffee itself. Right. right? A water enema is going to flush things out. So is a coffee enema, but it's the caffeine and the palmitic acid in the coffee that does the magic. And it doesn't take very much of it. Even people who are really sensitive to caffeine can start off with maybe 
a teaspoon of brewed coffee to 32 ounces and tolerate it actually pretty well. Uh, the caffeine being absorbed through the intestinal tract affects the body in a much different way than drinking coffee. So would you suggest doing the coffee enema in the morning versus in the evening? Absolutely. Yes, in the morning is best because it will give you a pick-me-up, but it's different than like just drinking coffee. It doesn't hit you that hard, but it's more sustaining. Like you said, you felt much better for like 24 hours. And that's the case with doing a coffee enema. I always tell people, you know, I'll never ask you to do a coffee enema again, but I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to do a daily coffee enema for two weeks. And, and that's it. Usually by two weeks, the person has felt such a dramatic improvement in their health that the coffee enema sells itself. And frankly, the objections to doing the coffee enema mainly have been either the person has back pain or knees, knee problems, and it's hard for them to get in a position to lay down. And then even if you are physically fit and you lay down to do a coffee enema, when it's time, when you feel the urgency to eliminate, by then it's like too late. You stand up and then everything goes all over the floor, splashing, making a mess. So it takes a while to get your rhythm, to, you know, have a little catch bucket and to be able to develop the muscles down there, you know, to hold the fluids, to be able to move around and get up and, you know, eliminate. So... I have eliminated that ob objection. Um, and it's thanks to one client who, <laughs> bless his soul, started doing coffee enemas at my recommendation, but he bought one of my bags that could be turned inside out to clean. And he stood up and he rolled the bag so he didn't have to lay down. So it kind of like pushed the fluid up his rectum. So that got me thinking. What about a little pump so that people with back problems or knee problems or people who just didn't want the mess of an accident when they're getting up and it worked. Now I've got a glass jar with a handle that's got an adapter and you just put a pump on it. And so I use that in the shower. And so it's just a, you know, a long shower and I get out and uh, sit down and eliminate. It's a lot more affordable. I went through a stage where I bought a Kalima board. That's for like when you do like a five gallon enema, but I was using it for a coffee enema because I could flip up the toilet lid, put it down with a stool and I could literally just lay down and not have to get up when it was time, you know, to eliminate. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Where you're always coming up with solutions. So there's another another one you came up with. So maybe if people are wondering, um, you know, why would I do a water enema and why would I do a coffee enema? You know, what you'd use each for. I know the water enema, I, I think one thing is like when patients have gotten really dehydrated, sometimes after a surgery or something, you know, where they're just not drinking enough water and they get, they start to get sick because they're so dehydrated. I know doctors will prescribe a water enema like that you could get at any pharmacy. But the coffee enema in particular, do you want to name some reasons why you would use a coffee enema? You know, as far as coffee enemas go, because they're mostly water. And so with doing a coffee enema, some people will say, you know, not much came out. My first answer to that is how much water and what kind of water have you been drinking? Because I believe you're dehydrated. Actually, probably 80% of the population is dehydrated to some extent. We're just not drinking enough water at different times throughout the day. And we're not drinking the right kind of water. So it's not getting in our cells to actually do the hydration. The coffee enema, it is also very hydrating. And so I tell clients that if that happens to you, 
prepare another jug of the solution and do another enema. And then you'll get things, you know, coming out. Yeah, that's great. What is some of the scientific research behind it? Because I know you do hear different things. Some say to be careful, they're cautionary about it, and others, you know, tout the benefits of it. Let's talk about the pros and cons of a coffee enema, because if you Google it, you'll see both. So as far as possible cons, well, I, I know of one, and it's just, I think, the way that you insert the tube. People are aggressive or maybe push it too far or too rough with it. I think some people are afraid of tearing the tissue. Yes. And you can use some natural lubrication and you can bear down so the sphincter opens so it can be inserted, you know, easily. Uh, There's no rush. You know, they can just take their time. And also it helps when you use a flexible tip instead of the solid tips. So that way, you know, it really keeps you from injuring yourself. I think some people envision you're pushing this tube up far into your body, but it really doesn't require that. I think our flexible tips that come with the kit are four inches long. It doesn't take much. And I recommend... You know, when you're standing up using the pump is you can take your other hand and you can massage because on the left side of your abdomen, that's the ascending part of your colon. So you can kind of massage that and then across your ribs, underneath your ribs is the transverse part. And you can just be massaging that and then the fluid will make its way all the way up there. And so it can be, you know, very, very comfortable with, without pain or discomfort. Yeah. And when you feel like you're full, like for instance, 32 ounces, I never put that much inside me at one time. I use about half of it. And then I will hold, you know, ideally six minutes. Because if I'm using a 32 ounce jar, half of for six minutes, and I go eliminate, then I come back in, I refill, I do another six minutes, and I've got that magic 12 minute mark where my body's taking out the caffeine and the palmitic acid to do its magic. Yeah, and I did hear so that every three minutes you can hold it in, it's benefiting you. It's what is it doing? Recycling the bile. And allowing for more toxins to be latched onto and eliminated. Yes, yes. And I tell people, even if they can only hold it one minute, that's what the two-week challenge is about. Because initially, you're not going to be able to hold it long at all. But that's okay. Just go eliminate, refill, do your best. And then practice makes perfect, like day two or three or four. By the end of the two weeks, you're going to be able to hold it the 12 minutes. But any amount of time that you hold it is better than none. And you'll yeah. feel the difference in your body. Yeah. So as far as the actual process, I know for me, what I did was I boiled four cups of water, distilled water, not tap water, and then put in organic coffee I put in four tablespoons, but some people may do less. I let it boil. Then I add the coffee and put it on simmer for 12 minutes. Then I strain it through a strainer, put it in a coffee enema bucket that I've purchased on Amazon. (laughs) I had a metal bucket and then let it cool off. And while it cools off, because it might take a half hour or something, I go do my exercise routine or I go do whatever it is I want to do in the morning. So that was the first part. And then the second part was laying a towel down on your bathroom floor, getting comfortable, maybe put a little towel rolled up under your head. And if you lay down and you have the bucket raised up, like put it on a bathroom hook or or something, so it's elevated above you. And then you could dip the tip in coconut oil. That's what I do. I'm Sure. Like you said, some kind of lubricant. I found like if you're laying on your side and then you tuck your knees in, insert that, release some of the coffee into you and then hold it as long as you can up to 12 minutes. But the first time you may only be able to hold it a minute or or less. 
then you just get up quickly and, and use the bathroom. <laughs> Um, do you have anything to add to that process or anything you've tried that was helpful? Yeah. The way you prepare the coffee, I might not get around to doing my coffee enema. That takes too long. It's too much effort. So I bought myself a stainless steel percolator and I just make my coffee. It takes Oh, less than five minutes. And then I fill my 32 ounce glass jar almost all the way up to the top, I leave room for the coffee. But then I pour the fresh right off the stove brewed coffee in on top of the room temperature water and it's perfect, no waiting. And I do mine in the shower so I don't have to lay down. And But yeah, just really, however you prepare the coffee, the boil method and straining it and all of that was more difficult. And I found that percolating gets all that goodness out of the coffee grounds and it's just faster. Yeah. Well, that's definitely good for people that, you know, want to shorten that time period and to use your product, like you said, which is something different um, that people could look up on your website, hxsolutions.com. So if you haven't ever experienced an enema and this seems very foreign you can google it and find exactly how to do it or you know or find different products different coffee enema kits whether it's on your site for that particular one you can do standing in the shower you go to amazon they have a couple different varieties of it and so as far as the coffee i know i use organic and and it's also a green bean, I guess. So it's a little different than black coffee. But what do you use? Well, green coffee is lightly roasted and it contains higher amounts of caffeine and palmitic acid. I've used both. When I was doing daily coffee enemas with the green, lightly roasted beans, literally my skin started to turn green. My liver was making so much bile it was like in excess. So I switched to like a medium dark roast coffee, which is more yawn. So actually it detoxifies your body more than being yin. So I just get an organic coffee. There's local roasters. So you can get something very fresh. That way you're not having to worry about mold and things like that. They do sell coffee online that is mold certified free. And I started checking into that and it's grown in the shade, but they're touting that it's very low acid coffee. Well, for a coffee enema, you don't want low acid coffee. For drinking, yeah, that that would be great. But that's not the best, you know, for a coffee enema. So I would say organic, find a local roaster. It seems like now with the craze of everybody drinking coffee, there's local roasters just everywhere. Yeah. And literally any way you make coffee, just as long as you're getting that brewed coffee in your water solution is better than no coffee enema at all. So I would just encourage people to start anywhere that they can do it, that they, they're they used to doing it, you know, until they develop the habit and receive, you know, before you develop the habit, if you can feel so much better, it, it's just a huge incentive, you know, to continue to make it part of your routine. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's easy to make it a habit once you experience the benefits of it for sure. You were asking about the cons. One of the cons that I've heard is that, oh, that's going to strip the minerals out of your body by, you know, doing coffee enemas. And so I have to tell a story. I was in a car wreck. I had to have knee surgery. Now I started doing daily coffee enemas in 2011. And that wreck was in 2013. So I had to have all my blood work, everything done for surgery. Uh, At the time, I actually went through a life insurance exam and had all the blood work done. And my numbers came out perfect, like right down the middle of everything. So much so 
like the life insurance companies going, wow, what are you doing? We've never issued life insurance with the healthiest class that you that you qualified for. So I have to say, daily coffee enemas, daily near infrared sodas, daily drinking my ozonated water. When I was at the physical therapy place, they had me put my hand on that S3 machine, which measures circulating antioxidants. Dr. Oz had it on its show and they use the machine to sell you supplements because most people don't have enough antioxidants. And when they measured mine at 80,000 units, they're going like, oh my gosh, what antioxidants are you taking? Keep in mind, coffee enemas are making them master antioxidant glutathione, increasing at 600%. Plus, you know, near infrared saunas also increase your antioxidant level in your body. But I personally, after doing daily coffee enemas for several years and then having all the follow-up blood work, personally did not see that that was true. I'm not a demineralized person. The only thing different than maybe a standard person is, is I do a regular hair analysis and I take the minerals and supplements recommended by that. So maybe if someone wasn't taking anything and had a bad diet, where they weren't getting good nutrients from like organic non-GMO food or something like that. Maybe they were really nutrient deplete. Maybe it would. I just have never seen a real study to back up that warning of how a coffee enema would demineralize you. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. I mean, you had real samples, real blood work to show what was going on in your body after all the coffee enemas. So the cons can be easily taken care of. I mean, if you just insert that tube carefully and not too aggressively. And like you said, if you're eating a healthy diet, I mean, I'm sure if someone was extremely deficient because their lifestyle and what they're eating, then that's going to show up no matter what, whether you're doing that coffee enema or not, that you're depleted. But to have the benefit of that great a jump of antioxidant in your body is worth doing. I agree. People ask me, I'm only going to do one thing for my health. What would you recommend, Eileen? It's a no-brainer. I say do a daily coffee enema. I know of nothing that gives you as much as that does. Yeah. If you look at those antique magazines and advertisements from the late 1800s, early 1900s, everywhere there's information on enema bags, It's like before we went to prescription medications, it was a regular thing where everybody in the household was doing regular enemas all the time. It's just one of the ways that people helped maintain their health. So we've just really kind of gotten away from that in this society. Yeah, well, I know I do them when I, especially when I detox my body from anything, like right now I'm working on detoxing heavy metals because I've had tests. I know I have high lead that I'm pulling out. So that's beneficial to do the coffee enemas to really help facilitate that process. So uh, it's good for that. Do you have any other things you want to add as to why someone would do a coffee enema? I've had, I've had many clients come to me getting on the hair analysis and they'll list all these medications, you know, anxiety, sinus issues, headaches, insomnia, just so many things. And I try to get him to do the coffee enema. And there was this one husband and wife where he said, I'll do that. And of course, whenever you start any detox program, sometimes, you know, you have Hexheimer reactions and you can, you know, feel uncomfortable and lethargic and all this kind of stuff. So I always am counseling clients to start slow, you know, make sure your detoxification pathways are opened up because if you're going to detoxify too fast, that's a stress on the body. And this guy, he says, oh, no big deal. I'll just do two coffee enemas a day. No need to start slow. You know, this guy was so sold on the coffee enema. It's almost like a snake oil, you know, it's the elixir, you know, try it for anything. I mean, obviously we can't make medical claims, but you know, your body when it has glutathione and it's, you know, trapping heavy metals and it's improving your digestion 
you know, it, it just does amazing things for you. Yeah. And I also thought of how many people in the country or the world um, are, you know, experience constipation. And so there's another benefit there if you're having issues. So I was relying on way too much vitamin C and magnesium, which were doing other things in my chemistry. I was like medicating constipation with a natural substance, but causing other imbalances. And so I really think that that's not a con, that once you rebuild the body to support digestion, then, you know, you'll be able to eliminate without having to do a coffee enema. Yeah, that's good information. So I guess the bottom line is the no pun intended, better out than in. That's, <laughs> that's the, the main theme here. Yes. So is there any last thing you want to add about this topic? Um, just to try it. Step out in faith. Give it, you know, a couple of weeks. Doing the same thing that you're doing right now is going to get you the same results. So if you're looking for something different, I would say to take me up on my challenge to do a daily coffee enema for two weeks and see how it benefits your body. Everybody responds differently. And if you have any back or knee problems or you don't want to deal with the mess, I would say go with the stand up no mess kit so that that isn't the barrier for you. You know, because there are thousands of people that swear by coffee enemas, how they've saved their life, how they're just not in pain anymore. They can sleep. There's just so many stories about how people have been helped. Yeah, that's great. Where can people find you and also your products? We're on social media under Create Tricks Solutions. And the website is creatrixsolutions.com. And the stand-up no mess kit is called the Enema Fix. <laughs> All right, perfect. And create tricks ends with an X solutions.com. Yes. Okay, perfect. And I'll put it in the show notes. Well, thank you again for coming onto the show and giving us some valuable information. Oh, well, thank you for having me, Marla.